Okay, so let's continue in our uh, 1.4 subsection, relations between sets. Again, you already know all these, but let's quickly review them and try to be uh, as formal as we can. Uh, so this means this set X is a subset of Y, all right? How do we, I mean, logically, what does that mean? Uh, for any X, which is an element of X, um, X is also element of Y, all right? So if an element is in set X, well, then this element must also be in the set Y, all right? So this is what subset means. Furthermore, if there exists, I mean, there might exist some elements in Y, which is not an element of X. So two sets are equal, for example, that means X is a subset of Y, and y is a subset of x. All right, so both of these statements are true. Well, then these two sets are the same, okay? All right, so operations on set, intersection, union, and difference. So intersection basically means x such that x is in x and x is in y, all right? So this is how we would formally write an intersection. X union Y, well, X such that X is in X or X is in Y. So X is in X, for instance, an atomic sentence. X is in Y is also an atomic sentence. Uh, they are either true or not, all right? And therefore, uh, X intersection Y is in fact a conjunction of two atomic sentences. All right, and here it's uh, uh, an, an atomic sentence or another atomic sentence. So be careful about that. So, I mean, hopefully this connection is, is clear. So X minus Y, how do we write this? This is a set of X's where X is in X and X is not in Y. Okay, so this is how we would normally and formally, I'm sorry, write these uh, operations. All right, so next, n-tuples and Cartesian products. So when we uh, 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 multiply, in a sense, when we multiply non-empty sets, we get an, an, an tuples. We call it, if, if we multiply n sets, we get an n-tuple, all right? So it's a vector, basically, vector, and each component is an element from the set. And this is how we formally write it. So a Cartesian product of n sets, x1, x2, all the way up to xn, is basically an n-tuple such that each small xi, all right, from this vector is coming from the, the, the capital xi for every i from 1 to n, all right? So, for example, if n is equal to 2, all right, uh, so I have x1 cross x2, so therefore an element is a vector with two components, x sub 1, x sub 2, such that x1 is equal to capital X1 and x2 is in capital X2. All right. Um, so if x and y are two vectors of same uh, uh, dimension size, all right, then we can say x is equal to y if and only if every single component is equal to each other. X1 is equal to Y1, X2 is equal to Y2, all the way up to N. Xn is equal to Yn. So this is how we would formally uh, de de define X being equal to Y, all right? So let me make some remarks. When we have N equals two, we call it ordered pair. And when N is equal to three, we call it ordered triple, all right? An important, well, again, you most probably already know this distinction, but this vector and this set, they are not the same thing, all right? So uh, maybe in word, uh, I mean, those signs uh, are, are significantly different in mathematical language, all right? So this is a set when you have those brackets. And when you see do these brackets, that is a vector, a vector one, four, five. And by the way, this vector and four, one, five, 
are definitely not the same vector. They're uh, significantly different vectors, different points on a three-dimensional space. However, this set and five, uh, one, four, uh, they're the same set. So within a set, it doesn't matter how you uh, order them, but in, a, in an n tuple, how you order them matters. All right. So when you multiply sets, the order is very important. All right. So that's that's one thing. Um, yeah. So next, I'm going to talk about binary relations. All right. So binary relations are basically a subset of a Cartesian product of two sets. All right, so this is 1.7. 1 1.7 1 .7 binary relations. All right. A binary relation, again, is a subset of a Cartesian product of two sets. All right. So, for example, if I have two non-empty sets, X and Y, I look at the cross product of these two sets, uh, X cross Y. A, a, a relation, a binary relation, is a subset of this uh, a Cartesian product. So this is not set of reals, all right? Set of reals has this another line there. This is just R. So it's a binary relation. Um, an example, do I have a simple example? No, I, okay. So let's say X is equal to one, two, and Y is equal to, I don't know, A, B, and C, all right? So, I'm not going to write x cross y, but for example, uh, 1a is an element of x cross y, right? 1 is coming from set x, a is coming from set y, all right? So, r, for example, can be 1a, um, 2a. That's it. So, this is a binary relation. Uh, there are many binary relations, uh, depending on... So, uh, there are many subsets of this Cartesian product. So, every subset of this Cartesian, every non-empty subset of this Cartesian product is a binary relation. All right? One example of a binary relation uh, over the integers, all right, is... Uh, the binary relation, instead of using the letter R, I'm going to use this strictly less than. All right. So this strictly less than is a binary relation and it's a subset of the Cartesian product of integers. Uh, so for example, one, two, this is an element of this binary relation. All right. Five, seven, this is a binary, uh, this is an element of this binary relation. Uh, 7, 2 is not an element of this binary relation. So what, what does that mean, uh, being an element of this binary relation? Well, 1, 2 being an element of this binary relation means 1 is strictly less than 2. And, well, it is true. Uh, this is being a binary relation, element of this binary relation, because 5 is strictly less than 7. But this is not, because 7 is not strictly less than two. Therefore, it's not an element of this binary relation. All right. So the reason why we call it binary relation, because a binary relation compares two things. All right. So for that reason, it's, it's a binary comparison. All right. All right. A binary relation satisfies some proper, some binary relations are very important. Some are not. For example, this binary relation over this set is probably not so interesting, but um, some binary relations are very, very important. So we say a binary relation is complete, all right? A binary relation is complete if and only if for any 
xy element of... Okay, so let me be more formal, all right? So first of all, where is this binary relation defined, right? So consider a non-empty set X. X can be set of any things, all right? But it's not empty. All right, and then consider a binary relation R, which is a subset of X cross X, all right? So I am comparing elements from set X with some other elements in set X. All right, so R is such binary relation. Um, then the binary relation R is called complete if for all x, y in x, either x, y is an element of R or y, x is an element of R. All right, so what does that mean? That means this binary relation. So when I, um, you know, tell you a binary relation, if, you, if, if it comes to you to abstract, uh, visualize it with the strictly less than uh, binary relation in set of integers, all right? So a binary relation R is complete, which means for any x, y, for any two elements you give me from this set, this binary relation should be able to compare the, the, these two elements. Either x is strictly less than y or y is strictly less than uh, uh, x. So therefore, the strictly less than binary relation over the integers is a complete relation, all right? The binary relation R is reflexive if for any x in x, we have x, x element of R, all right? So the binary relation is reflexive. It, it can compare every element with itself. The strictly less than binary relation over integers is therefore not reflexive because two, for example, is not strictly less than two. So it's not reflexive. And then finally, the binary relation R is transitive, okay, transitive, if for any x, y, z in x, x, y element R and y, z element R, if you like, if x, y is an element of R, y, z is an element of R, then x, z must be an element of R. Okay, so what does that mean? That means if I can compare x to y and then y to z, I must be comparing x to z. Uh, the strictly less than sign uh, binary relation over the integers is a transitive, okay? For any, that's important. Just pick one example, uh, one, two. So one is strictly less than two. Two is strictly less than five. Is it the case that one strictly less than five? Yes, it is. So for any x, y, if x is strictly less than y, and y is strictly less than z, well, then x must be strictly less than z. So therefore, the strictly less than binary relation, although it's not transitive, uh, I'm sorry, reflexive, it is a transitive binary relation. Uh, we can impose a bunch of other properties on uh, binary relations, but these are sort of uh, key assumptions on binary relations.